Right, we're in the back of the van and I've based it out. I'll turn the camera around and I can show you exactly what I think that I might do in my head. Hopefully it works out. Right, so there's the 22 litre chlorifier. It's got the 12 volt and the 240 volt dual coil element in it. And here is the expansion bottle. Now, I've been told that because it's a pressurized system, it doesn't really matter if it's above or below. So that's really handy because it keeps it compact. So what I would like is to basically, hot water comes out here and then I'll just have a flexi hose into a T-piece and then it goes up there for the hot water for the sink and another T-piece after for the shower which will just they'll run up there all these cables here will all be moved because they're apart from that one because that's the inverter that's the inverter remote but this stuff here which is the old heating sort of stuff and the 200 amp relay there I might move to here I'm not 100 sure because it would be nice to keep this if there was any like, water to you know, leak or whatever, so I might put some rubber matting and make it waterproof in here. Um, but I suppose I'd soon know if there was any leaks because the pump here would just cycle out. It, you, know, you could hear it going. So this is a shore flow and a fire me a pressure vessel or accumulator, sorry. So I have got loads, oh, where are they? Here they are. Loads of push fits. And this is 15 mil. So the hot water will come out of here and then it will go straight in. Well, apparently, allegedly, According to this, it only has to go in line. So there's the shower and there's the sink. So out of here, into a T-piece, one into a shower, one into a sink. So I might do it like that then. So it doesn't really matter where this goes. I would have thought that that will come straight out and then it will see after you'd have your takeoff but not having to ensure, I'll, I'll do it this way and then it's as per the instructions but my my thinking would have been coming out into the expansion and then off to the services i.e shower and sink but anyway they're all 15 mil push fits so I've got some couplers some another couplers elbow some inserts small elbows elbow some T pieces I've got quite I've got quite a few bits and pieces here left over and some more just push fit couplers and some more T pieces so I think I've got enough to get on with. So, I don't know how to mount that there or there. See in a bit. See in a bit. I might, I might just mount it there because I would like to build a shelf above here so I can put my stack and stores so I'm going to fix that, fix that to the wall and see what it looks like right first of all let's fit this T piece 
as per the instructions. Like so. So there's the T piece. And all I've got to do is connect that to there, but I might just get a flexi a flexi piece. So it's under no pressure on you know. Also, my idea is if I try and make up some kind of a 90 degree bend there and 90 degree then there that's more more room for leaks if you have two bits of pipe and I'm going to use up one bend there and one bend there if you know what I mean so it would be nice to just get like a piece just one bit of flexi I'm pretty sure you can get them if not then I will do that so that will then go off to the hot water but we don't get that though anyway I'll do it to have the instructions and see what it comes out like right I've mounted that to the wall and all I've got to do put that back on let's put you on a tripod mounted that's not going anywhere so now somehow pipe up and across I might just try and keep it underneath this line but it would be nice to put everything underneath I'll probably just put a little hole here just in case I could put that down a little bit in fact I will put this down a little bit I think It's quite solid. Right. I think I'm happy with that. Not 100% sure to be fair. But hey ho. It's all a learning curve. Right. I've just had a major rethink. Because I just thought. Do you know what? That looks really cool there. But it would be nice to have all the water system. In one place. So I'm going to take all this apart and I'm going to move the pump, I'm going to move that across and I'm going to put the pump roughly there. <laughs> so I'm going to dismantle all this and I know there's a bit of pressure in here and I'm just going to take it all apart because it would be nice to have that all, that all clear and everything in one place. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, this is um, not a five minute job, but I think that's the best thing. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Last time I did this, I didn't pressure down the system. Undone this, these linkages here, and it just went and it walked everywhere. So I've turned the, the uh, pump off, and I've left the tap open. I'm not really sure. I know there's going to be pressure in here, so unfortunately I think it's just going to 
I'm going to have to let it go again. But I've got some cloths. <clears throat> so, I need to undo the earth. And, ah, it's positive. <clears throat> Even though it's not switched on. <sighs> yeah, easier said to bloody done. I want that to come off. Well, I suppose you don't want it to come off easy, do you? <clears throat> okay. Right, that's not going to come off very easy, so I'm going to have to take this off. Just see what happens, I suppose. Right, so I've done um, undone the earth. And obviously I had this problem before, which I just realised. Up here, I made a bullet connector <coughs> so I've obviously made provisions for that so that's completely disconnected and then I'm going to just thread that back round and back round and then round the back and down Bit. That runs up there. <sighs> yeah. So I could actually disconnect all that, which I'm gonna, because I need to take all that out anyway, because I only want one cable, which is for the power for the air fryer and the induction hob. And that cable there is for the fridge. And then that's just lights. So they can stay there. So I'm going to take this one out. Right, so I've removed the power cable all the way. There it is. I should probably drop it down behind there. So it's all hidden from that post. Come out here. And now I'm just going to use this, the cap to try and release the pressure, which is none in there, hopefully. So, here goes. Probably get wet now. God, I did, I did them up tight, didn't I? God, wow. Yeah, super tight, right. So I better get some grips or something. Right, let's have a laugh. Got my grips. I don't want to ruin, ruin anything, so I just put a bit of that around it. loose it's gonna be full of water it shouldn't be full of water if I've done it right there should be nothing in here ah oh, yeah I've done it right this time Yeah. Okay. Let's keep that up so it doesn't leak. Oh, I should have done. It's got some stops or something. I bet I didn't get any stops. Oh, bollocks. Oh, well, I can live with that. use some of Teddy's toys. Right, not too bad. So now I can take this lot off and move it down. See what happens. Right, it's water coming out here, so I'll just put it into a little bucket. I'll have to let that drain. So I have to do that in a minute. But I can concentrate on this bit here. Because obviously that's just got to go to the sink. So I can 
cut a bit of this wood out and then I just have a nice hopefully under here so cold up to there and then cold up to there so it'll just be a T piece here hopefully that's the aim let's see how it goes I haven't got a freaking clue what I'm doing to be fair there mind Right, so here we got my whole water system now. It's all off. So now I'm gonna have to probably take that off. I know this can go absolutely anywhere because also this is completely pressurized by the pump. But I would like everything to fit like like there. I don't know, I don't think these can be laid down. I think that needs to be up. Blah blah blah. But I think this actually can lay down. So, but this is for the hot water and the hot water comes out here. And it would be nice. I mean, it should just pump out to be fair. I'm not 100% sure. But in all fairness, I mean, to me, it would be nice if it was all above. But that means that it's a lot more room taken up. And I would like to put the stack and stores on here, but to be fair, if it doesn't work, then I won't have to. I can always put the stack and stores here. Because this is where I wanted my, um, so I've got my paddle board here. And from this end here, I wanted to build one of those big slide out drawers. But just see how it goes, really. I mean, in all fairness, it would have been great if I'd have thought about this when I was building this van because this would all be completely different. There wouldn't be any of this structure because originally there was two motorbikes in here and the base bed that actually pivoted. It pivoted on there with some hinges. You can probably just see the screw holes for the hinges. And the whole lot lifted up. There was none of this at the back. There was rams there, actuators that went up. So it is, it's evolving. It's one of those evolving camper vans. But it would be nice to just have two bits of wood across there. And obviously where the solar system is across there. And then just flat. And then it'll be nice, like a professional camper van. Like an American Sprinter. Like the way they do it all with all the big batteries and all that malarkey but it's not you know this is an upgrade so this is what you've got to deal with so i'm just going to make the best i can so let's try and rearrange this and see what it looks like right this is turning into a bit of a mission now but this is where just my what they call wheel chuck levelers went so I'm going to raise this shelf because the tank's there and it will be a bigger tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this shelf to about this height here. And then I can have the tank, which will be bigger, which I've just taken some measurements. We'll come up to about there and be all right in like there. You know, it's come out a little bit. So all that will be gone because that will be on that slidey thing that's going to go here. This is just like a 25 litre water grade tank. Hose comes out from the outlet, well inlet from the inside, on the outside sorry. And then also this pipe just goes into the back, just down in there. So it would be nice to have like the water tank like there come out the side, underneath, run along, job done. So now I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna raise it up. So then I'll have just a pipe, cold water pipe coming out, job done. Wow. I want it to be nice, I want it to be right. This is what you gotta do. Right, we're back in the van. I'm really sorry about yesterday. Uh, I didn't really record much of doing all the pipe work. Well, no, not all, you know, getting some of it done. I had to babysit 
So, anyway, here we go. So the cold water is going to come in here, into the pump, into the accumulator, and then it's going to tee off here, going in. So that's the cold water feed there. And then the hot water is going to come out, down into the expansion chamber that's going to go to the sink so i've got some more that pipe there is for the cold feed so i've got to sort that out um and then hopefully i can do the wiring i've got some more more pipe and i've got somewhere some more more elbows had to get today stupidly <laughs> i bought a piece of pipe to go from there to there but i needn't have bought that because this is from the engine so there's just going to be a pipe going through there and out so in and out so i don't know why but there's nothing going to be coming out of there silly I know, <laughs> but I just thought, oh, I better block that off. But if there's nothing coming in, there's something going out. So anyway, let's carry on. Right, I think I've sussed it. Sorry about the poor light. It's absolutely smashing it down outside. And I'm in the back of the van with just my lights on. So, <clears throat> we have got... Water in, that's the cold mix for the shower. This is the fill, goes all the way down, goes to in. That's the theory. And then obviously tees off for the cold water. And that goes into the sink. This is the hot water that comes out, down, across, into the pressure vessel, tees off, and that's the hot water. So that's going to go to the sink. And then round, and I'll just put a stop on it for the moment, and that is the hot water for the shower. So hopefully, hot water for the shower, Cold water for the shower. Hot and cold water. It's going to go to the sink. So what we've got to do now is run a pipe from that one. Same length as that. Which I've got here. And that is for the sink. For the hot water for the sink. And then I can probably, hopefully, fill it up. I have made a bit of a monumental mistake. I bought some more pipe. Look at that. And I thought I'd buy two meters just to temporarily fix it up. So from there, that goes into the tank, which is down in there. But <laughs> I bought the wrong size. And the size that I've got for this to loop it round is the correct size which is that but I didn't buy enough of it so now I'm going to have to go back to the shop buy a couple more metres of this to get it working never mind shit happens right so I'm going to do the water first I'm going to do the, the hot tap first. Right, so my sink, that's the cold tap, and this is the hot tap. So now I have to find the other compression fitting and somehow feed it through. Which shouldn't be too much because it's only just there. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So now we need to get find that metal compression fitting. I think that's just a 
stop and I must have that somewhere must have so let's see if I can find that I don't know what I've done with that I'll have put it somewhere safe <laughs> that I can't remember but another thing as well <coughs> I leave these stickers on so I know what millimetre everything is and that sounds silly but also you can see that sticker there underneath so I know that's 5.5 and this kitchen stuff is all made of 12 mil a little bit of a tip there anyway so let's go and find this compression fitting and hopefully it don't fall off because that was a bit of a pain to drag because there's a back panel that goes across here hence the reason why that's there so anyway let's go and find that right so I've taken the cap off <clears throat> I've put on a insert an olive and a compression fitting so that just slides get it out of the way that just slides in there hopefully and then just bolts all the way up like the other one does not much room for camera in here unfortunately so I'm just going to just crack on and do it right there we go so I can shine some light on it so you can see the top one it's a hot and the bottom one is a cold now I've put these little cable strap type things on the pipe so I can see them if they leak so I shall uh, I don't want them to drop so I can at least see if they're leaking so anyway right now right all we've got to do now is go to the back of the van now and connect the hot tap well the hot pipe to the outlet and then hopefully that's all the plumbing done oh dear yeah right uh, let's go back to the back of the van. Right. Both connected. So. Oh, you can't be see the light. So I can get the light a little bit better. So, that's, this is the hot water. And the bottom one is the cold water. So hopefully... That is all done. So all I've got to do is put some little brackets there to stop them from all wobbling around. Right, so hot is capped off and the cold is tapped off, capped off. So all I've got to do now is put the cold water feed, which I've already got the new pipe because I went and got the wrong stuff, which is that that stuff wrong size it should be that size so you can see the difference a bit of a cock up but i've got some nice black stuff now I can pull it out i've got three meters i don't need three meters but in all fairness my theory is always to be looking at it than looking for it so, I mean, all I've got to do is redo the uh, positive, which is not too much of a hassle because it's here. And then just connect that up to that and then run a negative line. I don't know where I'm going to do that. I might just go to the chassis somewhere. I've also got to run another cable all the way along there. Behind, 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 up, and then into probably the fuse box or the links powering distribution box. I'll probably just do it on on there. To be fair, There's plenty of negative sides. I'll probably do that. Right, let's crack on with that then. Right, so the positive cables, negative cable, 
that run, runs through there using the original one and the fuse box. So all we do is connect that to there. And where's my, oh dear. And I've got some new, nice new food grade pipe that's gonna run to there, back to the tank. So, let's wire that up and connect this up. Right, that's all done. So I can put this cover back on. There. JWD. Alright, now for the tank which is down there. Right, so that's on there. Just screwing it up. Make sure it's nice and tight, but not too tight to break it. I think it's been nipped up. Okay, hopefully that should be it. No leaks. That'd be great if it was none. So all I'm gonna do now is fill the tank up, turn the pump on, fingers crossed. Right, let's see if it leaks. So let's turn it on. Right, uh, oh, there you go. Okay, so it's purging at the moment. You can hear it purge up. So let's go around the back because that's where all the leaks are going to be, I think. And let's just uh, right. So we've got a dribble of cold coming out. Let's go and see around the back. I might. I'm going to leave that on. I think. I don't know. Cool. Certainly rattling on around the back. Right, let's go around the back. All right. Okay. Probably going to take ages to fill up. Any water in there? Oh, that's going down pretty quick. Add some more water. All right, put a bit more water in. Not much, they're down to there, but I suppose that's got to fill up. And that's, oh. Well, okay. Perfect. So, it should be completely full up. Hmm. Right. Obviously, there's going to be no hot because obviously the uh, obviously, but the cables down here. Where are they? They're not connected. But what I can do is to see if the uh, 12 volt is working. Let's just connect it to my snap-on power pack. And just let that go but in all fairness the pump's not purging so there should be no leaks because if that barks up then we know we've got a pressure drop because it's a pressure drop pump so i'm going to fill the tank back up and then i'm going to try and purge the hot water system see how that goes but fingers crossed it's looking really good Right, well it hasn't dropped pressure. I filled the tank back up. I've just noticed obviously this is a 12 volt side and that's a 240 side. Got an extra wire here. Don't know what that's for. So, what I'm gonna do now is go back in the cab when the living area, habitation area, what you wanna call it. And hopefully we should get water out of the hot side and the cold side right need to look in here where's my torch gone 
All right, <sighs> make sure there's nothing leaking. Bone dry. Cool, right, so let's open up the cold side. Hot side. Oh yeah. Hopefully, go oh, that pump's bloody noisy, isn't it? Oh, it's kicked off. Right, so we've still got no leaks because it's pump's kicked off. So, hot, cold, lovely, perfect. Right, let's try and wire up the uh, 12 volt side now. Right. Tank's full up, must be, because it's got quite heavy. And we've just taken another half a tank. This is a 25 litre tank, and that's a 22 litre chlorophyll. So, obviously, I'm going to have to make, I'm going to get a bigger tank, because there's only three litres between hot and cold. So, and that's the reason why I want to get rid of this and put it on a sliding mechanism as it all comes out. And that'll be on there and then I can have a water tank here which is the wheel arch is there so it'll be over the axle as near as damn it so this whole area here I think it's a 120 litre tank I mean I can go up but I, I don't want to go up just it'll be about here that's the reason why that bit of wood's there so that'll be a hundred litre tank in there so that should be enough anyway so let's get some more water and let's go and get the snap on battery pack and uh, connect it up. Right, so I've worked out if this is a 300 watt immersion uh, heater running at 12 volts, that's roughly 25 amps. And this is a snap-on battery pack, which is fully charged, and that can take 1,700 amps, allegedly. So all I'm going to do is cut the wires and connect it up, see what happens. Right, a bit rudimental, probably not going to do it very well. Uh, but while that's charging and heating up, what I might do is just stick a three pin plug on there and chuck that on the inverter as well. Because at a later date, because this van's ever evolving, instead of plugging it in there, it actually has an AC output so I can hardwire this into there. Hence the reason why I haven't cut that cable. That's induction cable, proper induction cable. It's quite a few quid. So I can shorten that, pull it all the way around and wire it in permanently. Hunky dory. Which I think I might do actually, cause I, might, I might as well cause I'm here, innit, really? 
and you can probably give it an hour, give it an hour or so, and see if there's any, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be hot, it just has to be warm to know it's working. And then I can probably, I'm just gonna build a little shelf, and then obviously the stacking stores can go on top of there. And hopefully, but I must admit, oh, hang on a minute, we've got a leak. We have got a leak. Uh, bollocks. All right, let's stop that. Focus. Right. Okay, let's stop that. Let's give this other one a bit of a nip, just in case. Right, I did take this off to be fair. So I probably didn't do it up tight enough. So that stopped that. As I was saying, before I saw that, obviously this is the uh, blow off valve. So that's gonna have to be out there and straight into the floor and out, just in case the pressure gets too much because that I don't want that spurting out all over the wood. So, <coughs> as I was saying, just gonna chuck a 13 amp plug on there, get an extension lead, chuck it in the back of here, and take that off, and then wire it directly into the output, which I should have done ages ago. It's all these little things, isn't it? It's, it's like your van, it's ever evolving. Oh, I'll do that later, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll temporarily do this, in all fairness, temporary is almost permanent in our heads oh dear well i'm really really happy that it's not leaking i mean it's quite an investment this thing and i'm glad i've moved it from like here down to there that's a lot more tidier apart from all this stuff here and all my mess But it would be nice to have one of those like put out systems you know on the floor that'd be really really great and a bigger tank so i'm really really happy and i'm glad it's not leaking <laughs> i'm right so happy okay well i'm gonna let this go for a little bit and then uh i'll come back to you see if we got warm water so it doesn't have to be hot i just want to make sure it's working and then I can bolt it down hunky-dory. So, uh, back in a little bit. Right, as you can see, I have started taking all the wiring apart. <sighs> this is for the inverter. This needs to be hard-wired in. So, all that's gone across there. This will be moved. <clears throat> There's plenty of slack. So, yeah, the heater is working and all plumbed in well i wouldn't say it's not working i'll tell a lie so there's there's the 12 volt which i hooked up to the battery pack and left it on for about an hour and i had probably about 40 seconds of warm water so that's working I'm going to do the 240 side, which is there, so I need to put a little junction box on that. Uh, I, I might put the junction box here, actually, and then carry it on so we've got a bit of, bit of slack. And then tidy those cables up. Right, so I'm going to wrap this video up here. I've probably bored the pants off of you, but in all fairness, this is me fitting the chlorifier system and uh yeah i'm really really happy with it obviously there's a lot of bits and pieces that it's almost impossible to film where would you start i mean you'd get bored i mean i'm bored i'm bored of filming because i know it's gonna be boring for you but in all fairness if you can take some kind of inspiration or you know thought process of all the all the piping and all that because it has to be neat 
and it has to flow nicely. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Don't forget to hit that like and uh, like button. Ring my little bell so every time I make another shit video, you'll be notified and go, nah, don't want to like that. But anyway, all joking aside, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video where hopefully I shall have this thing up and running. Anyway, bye for now.